This year's National Diaspora Day celebrations is still resounding as activities that marked the day are still fresh. On today's episode, we bring you thought-provoking solidarity messages by Dr. Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Dr. Akiumi Adeshino, President of the African Development Bank, and Dr. Mansur Mukhtar of the Islamic Development Bank. We also bring you the theme discussion on diaspora engagement in a globally challenging time. And we do not forget our diaspora of the moment. And we also have music by Brian to spice your day. Please stay with your favorite program, The Diaspora, and I am Coin Sola Adetunbi, your host. Now let's begin with these solidarity messages by our compatriots in the diaspora, making us super proud. Nigeria's greatest asset is its people, and it is wonderful that we are celebrating our contributions on the international stage. The diaspora of our great nation has been incredibly successful wherever they have gone, enriching societies across the globe. I meet them everywhere in my work with the United Nations, from academia to art, from sport to science, from the Grammys to Star Wars, our diaspora has scaled the heights and brought pride to our Nigerian brothers and sisters. I am delighted to join you today, albeit virtually, for the celebration of the Diaspora Day. It is a time to reflect and think about our nation, our diversity, and celebrate our footprints around the world. Like a stream, that charts its course from its source and gives life to all along the way, so too has Nigeria's stream of excellence and innovation reach all parts of the world. Take anywhere in the world, you will find Nigerians. We have an incredible capacity to adapt in any environment and to thrive against all odds. Now, I once jokingly told someone that if you see anyone jogging in the Arctic Pole amid super icy weather, without a t-shirt on, the person will most certainly be a Nigerian. Whether in literary arts, music, fashion, hospitality, engineering, law, sports, medicine, science, technology, and mathematics, finance, or in international development, Nigerians in the diaspora are pace setters. We lead as Nigerians in the diaspora for one simple reason, I believe. We have genes of excellence programmed into us as Nigerians. Today, for the first time in our history, a Nigerian is the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. A Nigerian is the Director General of the World Trade Organization. A Nigerian is the president of the African Development Bank, that's myself. A Nigerian is the president of the afri Exim Bank. And until he's passing away sadly recently, a Nigerian was the president of the OPEC. A Nigerian, Professor Wale Shoyinka, who actually spent a significant amount of time in the diaspora, won the Nobel Prize in Literature, the first ever by a Nigerian. As a member of the diaspora, I have had the honor of winning the World Food Prize, the first ever by a Nigerian. A Nigerian, Robert Okeje, was named into the US National Aeronautic Space Administration, NASA, Inventors Hall of Fame. A Nigerian won the two-time World Heavyweight Championship of the world. And a young Nigerian woman in the diaspora was named the most outstanding chief marketing officer in the world by Forbes. A Nigerian in the diaspora holds sway as the Minister of Justice and Solicitor General of Alberta in Canada. Now, from those holding high positions to those working day and night with a long night shifts 
to make an honest living. Nigerians in the diaspora continue to make Nigeria proud. They never forget where home is. Today, Nigerians in the diaspora send home over $20 billion a year as remittances. Now, to put this in perspective, you got to think of the following. Nigeria's foreign direct investment in 2021 was $4.8 billion, according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD. That means remittances by Nigerians in the diaspora is four times the total foreign direct investment to Nigeria. Wow. Nigeria's export revenue for crude oil averages about $40 billion annually. Now that means that remittances by Nigerians in the diaspora is half of the crude oil exports of Nigeria. It's like they are the new oil for Nigeria. Without any doubt, Nigerians in the diaspora are Nigeria's second largest source of revenue after crude oil. Nigeria should therefore provide better policies to support Nigerians in the diaspora. Now, regardless of where we live or work, home is home. I remember earlier in my professional career, I was asked if I would like to stay in the United States and eventually become a citizen. I said no. I showed my colleague my green passport and I said, God did not make a mistake to make me a Nigerian. I will live as a Nigerian. I will die as a Nigerian. And on the resurrection morning, I will ask God for permission, if possible, to rise as a Nigerian, if I can hold the green, white, green flag in my hands. Nigerians in the diaspora are like billboards on which Nigeria exhibits itself. I commend the efforts of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission that have brought greater focus on the role, the needs, and the contributions of Nigerians in the diaspora. Today, we celebrate 17 million Nigerians in the diaspora who are setting records. We have a duty and responsibility to do so. We represent ourselves and the nation of our birth. Nigerians have proven over and over again even against all odds, great odds, I must say, that they can be trusted in leadership positions at the highest levels of enterprise and public life. I am pleased that today, the work of the African Development Bank, where I am president, has impacted on the lives of 335 million people in the past six years. The African Development Bank achieved its highest general capital increase, increasing its capital from $93 billion to $208 billion, the highest in the history of the bank since its establishment in 1964. And I thank President Buhari for all of his support. Last year, the African Development Bank was ranked as the best multilateral financial institution in the world. Also, Last year, the African Development Fund, now that is the concessional lending institution of the African Development Bank, was ranked as the second best concessional financing institution in the world ahead of the World Bank and all 49 concessional lending institutions in all advanced economies. And this month, the African Development Bank was ranked as the most transparent institution in the world by Publish What You Fund among all global institutions. Now, I am sure there are several others with incredible stories of their own successes. Our successes, though individual, brings brightness to our nation and respect for our nation of birth. As Nigerians in the diaspora, we must continue to excel. We must continue to bring honor and respect to our land. We must 
contribute our share to build a more unified nation, one that is driven by excellence. A Nigeria that will become like the light of the Abo, to which all ships will sail. God did not make a mistake to make us Nigerians. Let us therefore use our God-given talents as Nigerians to drive entrepreneurship, creativity, and excellence, and to keep the flag of Nigeria flying around the world. Nigeria will achieve greatness. Its diaspora will play a great part in our country's greatness. That's why it is important for Nigerians in the diaspora to be allowed to participate in the political processes of Nigeria. It is time that Nigerians in the diaspora are allowed to vote. Other nations do this. America allows its diaspora citizens to vote. Several African countries now allow their diaspora citizens to vote. Nigeria should do the same. Then, Nigerians at home and Nigerians outside the country will share in the shaping the future of their homeland, Nigeria. May Nigeria thrive and prosper in peace, unity, and shared prosperity. Everywhere around the globe, across continents, in diverse areas and in different roles, Nigerian diaspora have indeed contributed immensely to the development of Nigeria and to their host country, bringing glory and recognition to our great country. I am proud to be part of this group. Many thanks to our frontline ambassadors. Now, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, was represented and his goodwill message is here presented. NIDCOM has over the past years mobilized and engaged Nigerians in diaspora to be ambassadors in their host countries and to excel globally. The diaspora has also invested their resources, talents, skills, and global exposure back home in Nigeria in areas such as healthcare, education, agriculture, ICT, transportation, housing, real estate, as well as the service industry, which has positively affected Nigeria's GDP. It gladdens our hearts that we always celebrate Nigerians doing great things globally. While a few are giving us uh, negative publicity, many are being celebrated for their ingenuity and hard work. We must therefore celebrate our own world-class scientists, global public administrators, entrepreneurs, sportsmen, women of excellence, entertainment celebrities, artists, engineers, and so on and so forth. I wish to therefore appreciate and celebrate all Nigerians in the diaspora on this auspicious occasion. Let me also congratulate NIDCOM for the various efforts put in place, which is yielding results in terms of a number of investments into the Nigerian economy by the diaspora communities. And now to our theme discussant led by Ambassador Joe Keshi. What can the diaspora do for Nigeria at this challenging time that the global world is, uh, a, a, you know, is handicapped by so many you know, challenges, right from uh, COVID, the war in Ukraine, the economy, likely economic recession as a result of uh, rising inflation all over the world. And of course, the insecurity in some parts of the world like Nigeria and other things. So the issue is, what can the diaspora do to help us out of these challenging times that we face? It is not just what the diaspora can do, but what the diaspora can do in collaboration and coordination with need come in order to accomplish our goals of engagement in Nigeria. We need engagement in health areas. We need engagement in education. We need engagement in infrastructure. And we need engagement in 
energy. We can do quite a lot. It is appalling that our textile industries are collapsing. And we have, we are exporting brains like the gentleman here said. It is about time we start importing these brains back. I have brains to tell you that have textile uh, background, but we don't have good textile technology uh, industries here. There is so much to be tapped into, there's so much resources. So these challenges, uh, you know, uh, it, it just a big concern to, to all of us. Security is very important for anybody, any investor, either local or foreign, you know, and uh, given the fact that, uh, of course, sometimes, you know, we that are leadership of this, of Nigeria's in diaspora, we always, uh, you know, uh, try to, you know, play down on the, you know, the, the, the veracity of, uh, you know, this negative information that is being passed all over the world about security in Nigeria. Yeah, we know we have security issues. We cannot downplay it, uh, you know, to the extent of uh, denying it. So we know that the security situation is very, is very good thing that we need government to take it very serious. One of the issues or the challenges that I see uh, also is the, uh, the issue of trust, whereby the people in diaspora have that trust and confidence that uh, whatever investment or whatever resources they are pulling to Nigeria is safe and secure. Um, and uh, I would say that we, the Zumunta Association USA have done a little bit of work in Nigeria. Uh, recently, we collaborated with uh, the Nigerian Diaspora Commission and we uh, executed a pilot project program in JAWS and also in Abuja. Uh, so definitely working with uh, the Diaspora Commission gives us that leverage or some sense of hope and security with regards to the safety of what you're engaging in rather than just operating with, with anonymous people in Nigeria, which you stand a chance or the risk of being swindled or being duped as the case may be. To be able to have an infrastructure that is effective to address this on a population level, we need to have a facilitatory regulatory involvement, ability to be creative with healthcare financing and funding, and then to be able to create um, a situation where the necessary data allows us to have the knowledge-based transfer, to have experts and uh, fellowships that are bi-directional, both within uh, Nigeria and then within United States, and have a specific um, area through which we function out of in Nigeria for us to be able to have very strong roots and processes for pilots and stronger engagement with a lot of the collaborators that are actually knocking very strongly on our doors to be able to do so as we speak. I think what we have to do is step up the sensitization campaign. Now, it will help in Nigeria because it will help a lot of those in decision-making positions to realize that they need to help the diaspora investor a lot more. They need to step in and guide us. On our part, if we have more sensitization, it would help. I mean, this has been mentioned earlier. There are a lot of people who still have a very, very negative impression of Nigeria. And they oh, may think, you know, nothing can work and nothing can, you know, nothing can possibly take off. We need that to be, you know, confronted. For me, there is a lot that we could do, um, at least from the diaspora perspective. I, we don't believe in challenges. I work in the you know, in the enforcement industry, uh, the privilege of working in the Office for Security and Counterterrorism. Proud to Nigeria having challenges with terrorism, I've been involved in terrorism issues. But it's not just me, we have more than 2,000 Nigerians who are working in, in metropolitan police and even other enforcement agencies that we could not even mention their names. And they are all eager to add value. And I think part of the challenges we have, uh, and I have to be blunt, is the info influential complex within the security infrastructure in Nigeria. Challenges with them accepting us as being one of them or being part of them and wanting to add value. Most of us are happy to add our value. We're not asking for anything to give them intelligence and help them with the challenges that they're going through. Let's join Boya Linko for some messages. Ha, not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, hey. listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. 
unimaginable again. Eh, you know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad or even end up in prison. If you must travel, travel legitimately. Now over to our diaspora of the moment. Our diaspora of the moment is Dr. Bem Linton Atim. Dr. Bem was born on the 27th of June, 1985 at the University of Pittsburgh McGee Women's Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dr. Bem is also a Nigerian American, originally from Bainway State. A few years later, his elementary school teacher, Miss Sykes, would identify him as a gifted child. Dr. Bem attended the Swanson School of Engineering at the University of Pittsburgh and graduated summa cum laude with a BS in civil engineering. He politely declined his father's suggestion to read law and decided on medicine. He attended the Well Cornell Medical School at the Ivy League Cornell University in New York. Dr. Bem excelled to a point that his class unanimously voted him to deliver a speech on their behalf. His speech at the Carnegie Hall flowed easily like a river, receiving thunderous ovations from the students, faculty, and parents alike in the audience. Dr. Bem decided to do his residency at New York University, where he secured an appointment at the Langone Health and is now an assistant professor at the New York University in the city. He is a member of the Group Practice New York University and his current practice location at 550 First Avenue, New York, New York. Besides practicing medicine, Dr. Bem also teaches at the medical school. Last year, he was promoted to the position of medical director supervising some doctors and this month, Dr. Bem was also overwhelmingly voted Teacher of the Year by the medical students. Congratulations, Dr. Bem Linton Atim. We celebrate you as our diaspora of the moment. The bills on me, no, the bills, the bills is on my, my, my big girl. Hey, no. hey, no. that girl in red, she has it locked down. She twists, she turns, shut down. She know they agree, know they slow down. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode as always. Surprisingly, this is not the final episode of the Diaspora Day celebrations. One more episode concludes the celebrations. See you next week.